Well, let's face it, there were no losers in there. I, well, <laughs> there were three losers. No. Simon Cowell? I gotta get Simon Cowell, <laughs> seriously, this time. Wow. So there's a cool, you know, cold wind right now in the room, but I've been asked to render a judgment, and I gotta render a judgment. Yeah, you're, you're hot to okay, truck, so let's yeah. go. Okay, so I'll tell you the three, and then I'll tell you which of the, those two are at the bottom. All right, so as you call the names, uh, you people want to come on out? Frankly, some not bad storytelling, some okay wordplay. Uh, when I say storytelling, I mean the, the story itself, but for a poor performance, and for using a phrase from this particular writer that I just didn't want to hear, inserts donor semen, <laughs> Catherine Ford, step up. Oh, okay, there's one of the three. All right. Um, so this is performance. This is the big problem. This writer is good. She's a good writer. I have I've read her work over her shoulder, but this is a performance problem that you that, that you just cannot overcome. You cannot read your work as if you are recovering from substance abuse. <laughs> Jill Batson, you gotta step up. Jill, oh. your third candidate. Yeah, well, in terms of performance, okay, average. In terms of wordplay, okay. In terms of the meaning, okay. But took a penalty because before he went up, he used a phrase which would, if he were reading in a bookstore, would insult somebody there and probably insult some people here. Used the phrase drunken First Nations people. So, sh sh shame prize goes to Timothy Anderson. Ooh. Oh, gee. They, but they were. <laughs> That's the Timothy, honesty Timothy, could you stand prize. in the middle? Okay, now. Verisimilitude doesn't count. Minister Faust would be dangerous if he had an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> that danger is going to come out right now because three has to be reduced to two. So, Minister, you're on a roll, so go with it, sir. Well, I can't believe that I'm going to let her go. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let Jill go. You can let Jill go. Jill, Jill. Jill. Yeah. Okay. Now, Minister, that that was the tough stuff. Now you're gonna be a hero. Now I feel better. All right. Now you're gonna bring out okay. the three individuals at the top of the list. Yeah. And there was great, terrific work for uh, doing some absolutely great conveying of a, of a bizarre experience, my man Mark John Heemstra, we're talking about something I know nothing about, but nevertheless he's a dynamite job, for telling a story with poise and with voices and eye contact and multiple characters and a hand on her hip, Marcy Morell. What can I say? Uh, multiple characters, audience connection, the most dynamic introduction of his own work I've ever seen. Ron Slamma. Yeah. Okay, take it away, Mr. All right, for absolutely outstanding creation of characters and telling the story and voice work, it's Marcy. I know that you have a background in children's literature, yes. and, and I felt that uh, that maybe you had read to a lot of kids at, at one point, and this is what was coming through, but for an adult audience. Uh, I have read hundreds of uh, pieces of work. I read my students' work to them, back to them so they can hear what it sounds like if, if the pacing is bang on, and so I guess all that practice helped. <laughs> i got to admit, it was touch and go between you and Ron. Did you get a sense of that as well? Uh, you know, I didn't even think I was in the running, honestly. I thought Ron's delivery was marvelous. Why'd you give it to Marcy over Ron? Because Ron had my vote. Okay. okay, there we go. Okay, so we're, okay. Because Ron's uh, performance was amazing, but the actual story, he's got three categories, performativity, wordplay, and the actual story. And um, the story was uh, far too simple. Um, there wasn't enough there. If you read his book, you would never choose it over Marcy's book. And it's a good well, point. She, she created better voices for her characters. Uh, his voices were just his voice. Yes, you're right. So people got, people got impressed by all of that extra stuff, but if the band wasn't there, he wouldn't carry it in the store. She would. She could have done that a cappella, and she would rock the box. 
you know, it was like uh, getting a groove, you know. I never had that before, and I thought, oh, this is great. And I felt kind of desperate, and that was really the mood I needed to convey. So, this is terrific. You're a raving poet. Oh, <laughs> Isn't this cute? Catherine Ford, she and Timothy are going to be the next strange love flavor flavor Brigitte Nielsen. I mean, they got to go across the country because those two together, they are, they are stunning and terrifying. What are you doing? We're I'm not ready, ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy, don't argue. That's Just so do it. Sad. Just a minute. Where are we Would putting Would you like these? me to show you how to find this, the spots for them? Sure. Oh, come on over here. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a quick test. Turn your book over. 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 ISBN number? Hang on. You have to enter the okay. ISBN number. The where it ISBN says keyword, number. right? Yeah, so oh, that's the top God number. Sakes. Would you like me to read it out for you? No, I can do this. Okay. Here it comes. 20th Century Books. Book Treasury? Storybook Anthology. So All you right. go over to that section, which is preschool three to five. Oh, hey, 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 hey. What? There's more. Oh, for God's sakes. Well, that must mean that one's wrong. Look how fast he did that. They've all got to go in the same place. Yes. Do they all have different ISB numbers? Yes. Of course they do. Ta-da! Find those places. Okay, those. but we might have to move. Them. I'm really a hopeless klutz when it comes to stuff like this. <laughs> no! So, now, do you think the judge I'm is... humbled. I'm humbled. You think the judge was fair with his room? No, of course not. Of course he wasn't. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Up next, Timothy Anderson. Interesting cat. I am totally unapologetic. 